going on everyone we back like we never left you know it i'm still working on the audio and i and i know some some videos are muted but that's because of the copyright issues you guys work with me bear with me i'm telling you every video i'm going to get better and better and better i'm going to change up the background set whole setup trust me thank you guys for subscribing and let's get into it Many people believe that hell is not a real place. The images that you're about to see can be very disturbing, so I do have to warn you, viewer discretion is advised. This AI-generated content is unreal, and it gives a depiction of hell. So this is your last chance to skip, and I have a question to ask you. Hell is a real place. And if you were to die tonight, do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, 100% that you would go to heaven? If you wanna make sure, just repeat after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Set me free in Jesus' name. If you said this prayer, comment below and click follow. What do you guys think about that? How can AI produce such a video like that of hell? What does it know about hell? Who taught it about hell? He accidentally discovered hell on the center of the earth. The deepest hole ever dug broke into a cavern over seven miles deep. And scientists lowered a microphone into this cavern and managed to record 17 seconds of this unbelievable sound. Now, if these are the screams of people or demons or simply wind noise or echoes, one thing's for sure, Jesus said, fear him, who after he has killed has the authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Repentance begins with sorrow over sin and a fear yes. of the glory and the holiness of God. Won't you turn your life to God right now? Pray this prayer. Jesus, forgive my sin. Come into my life and be my Lord. I believe you died on the cross and rose again in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer in the comments, write, save, and hit that copy link so other people can have the hope of heaven. What does he see, guys? Why is his shadow still there, though? You guys see that? Something fucking creepy happened when I got home. I was driving down the street, and my daughter's bedroom light is on. So I'm like, that's weird because she's at her dad's house for a couple nights. She's not home. So I parked my car right over here. And when I parked my car, I see her bedroom curtains are also opened a bit. So now I'm freaked out, right? And my doors were locked. But my house was built in like 1910. So I was like, I hope it's a fucking ghost and someone didn't, you know, break in or something. So I have to actually go in my house right now and I'm recording it because I'm scared. <sighs> All right, so here we go. I'm like shaking right now. Like my hormones are, like my adrenaline is going again. Like I have to go up my creepy dark stairs. None of the lights are on upstairs. This is not fun. Guys, what would you guys do if somebody, if your lights were on, you came home and nobody was there? 
Would you guys go inside your house or would you guys call the police? Comment down below. And you know I've been hearing weird shit in the attic, bro. Oh, fucking spooky. That's her room. Just turn the light on. I don't know which way I should point the camera. Bro, I'm freaked out. I'm gonna go in my bedroom first. Turning the light on in here. Ah. Why isn't it turning on? Okay. This shit's scary. Dude, I don't want to go in there. <laughs> Everything is like normal in here. But her painting fell. This painting she made was hanging on the wall and that fell. Her chair that belongs to her desk is here, but that just might be normal. Like maybe she was playing with it. I'm going to look in her closet. Dude. Everything's normal. I'm gonna shut her light off. Like the LED lights are on in my other daughter's room, and those always go on. She scared Dude, me for a second. It's fucking creepy. I'm looking behind the shower curtain. Ha! Nothing there. Weird. Like that light was off last night. I was here in my house sleeping. I hate when that light is on because if I close my door and the light is on, it shines through this crack. It's gotta be a fucking ghost. Like my house was built in like 1906, not 1910, 1906. <laughs> Definitely a ghost or someone living in there and she doesn't know. If you ever see a random staircase in the woods, you have to get away as fast as you can never climb them. There was a story going around a couple years ago stating that there are abandoned staircases in national forests around the world, like deep, deep in the forest away from anybody. It's just a staircase, no other structure attached to it. Some stairs are in ruins, some are perfectly sturdy, some are iron spirals like the kind you'd find in a lighthouse, and they literally just reach up to nowhere. And there are so many different theories as to why these stairs are there and what actually happens when you climb them. Only a few have ever dared to climb the staircases, and the people who have report feeling unnerved and unwelcome or even nauseous when they're up on the stairs. Some people say the stairs lead to another dimension, other people say it leads to hell. Others say that's why so many people and kids go missing in national forests because they climb these stairs and they're never seen again that's a good thought today to my best friend and i went hiking in the woods and you were not going to believe what we found first we came upon Whoa, this no random way they staircase. found the stairs guys they found the stairs okay okay let's see it's in the middle of nowhere and this is where it led to That looks recent because no way that could be there from hundreds of years ago. One came there and painted that. kind of weird temple in the middle of the woods like there's literally nothing around so there are all these like pillars with weird writing on it and dragons look like we're tap materials or something i don't know and then this is like in the middle tiktok what the heck is this 
comment down below if you know what that is. I've never seen that before. A Japanese teenager was brutally tortured and gang raped for 44 days before her body was dumped in a drum of wet concrete. On November 25th in 1988, 17 year old Junko Furuta was biking home from a waitressing shift in Tokyo when 18 year old Nobuharo Minato kicked her off her bike out of the blue and ran away. A 16-year-old named Hiroshi Miyano came to her aid and offered to walk her home. Little did she know this was a trap. Hiroshi ended up attacking Junko, raping her twice before calling that first guy, Minato, back. And then two other friends came who persuaded him to keep her in captivity. Here is when those 44 days of brutality would begin. And a trigger warning here, things are really about to get graphic. They held her in an empty house belonging to Nobuharu's parents. Nobody seen her and nobody helped her? Come on, man. This is ridiculous. Wow. And there, the boys would regularly gang rape her, torture her, and beat her. And not just the four of them. The teens invited other men back to the house with the express purpose of assaulting her. According to their own statements, they would force Junko to smoke and consume large amounts of alcohol. Then they would do things like douse her in lighter fluid and burn her, sodomize her, and starve her. She became so malnourished that she couldn't walk, and her burns and cuts were so infected that she became confined to the floor. Her poor little face was mangled to the point where you couldn't discern her features anymore. And while she was still alive, her body reportedly started to rot. On the 44th day, Hiroshi was in a foul mood because he lost a board game and he took it out on Junko. He doused her in lighter fluid and ignited it. And this is not the worst part. Over the next two hours, the boys excessively beat her. They made her drink her own urine. She was having convulsions. They repeatedly dropped an iron exercise ball on top of her until she succumbed to her injuries. They then wrapped Junko's mutilated body in blankets, shoved it in a travel bag, and then put that inside of a 55 gallon drum, which they then filled with concrete. They also threw in a videotape of the last episode of her favorite show because she said she had never gotten to watch it and they didn't want her to haunt them. The boys got caught and after a police interview, cops found Junko's body inside that drum and were able to identify her through her fingerprints. Hiroshi only got 20 years in jail, two of the others a minimum of five, and the last guy just eight years in juvie. That's ridiculous. If you think this devil's fish is laughing, then you're completely wrong. In fact, it's a painful manifestation of suffocation to the point of death. These two small holes on the belly are not the eyes we thought they were, but the shrimp mouths of the devil fish, because they usually like to bury their bodies in the sand, their true eyes grow above their heads. Meanwhile, devil fish exposed to the air will soon experience hypoxia. So in our view, the smiling face is actually the posture of the devil fish curling up to protect themselves. If he could speak, he would definitely say. What would he say if he could speak, guys? You need to have water, you need to have uh, a, a radio on batteries, and you need to have a, a, a flashlight on, on batteries to make sure that you can survive the first 36 hours. Things like that. That's simple things. But it starts there. The, the realization that not everything is planable, not everything is going to be honky-dory in the next 20 years. This is NATO saying that a war is coming. And they're telling Sweden and other countries to prepare for the war, to have food, water supplies, and all this stuff. And they don't know when it's going to come, but they're saying it's coming. I'm not saying it is going wrong tomorrow, but we have to realize it's not a given that we are in peace. And that's why we have the plans. That's why we are preparing for a conflict with, uh, uh, with Russia and the terror groups. If it comes to it, if they attack us, we're not seeking any conflict. But if they attack us, we have to be ready. You hear what he said, guys? This is the moment an airport security worker was caught allegedly swallowing $300 worth of cash. The money came from a passenger who had the money in a shoulder bag that had been given to a security worker to put through the x-ray scanner. When the passenger got it... Hold on, what was she planning on doing with the $300 after she swallowed it? Poop it out? And wipe it off? And... <laughs> it's gonna... <laughs> Yo, these people are crazy. Bag back, he noticed that the money had gone from his wallet. Authorities at Manila Airport have said they are investigating the situation. She took some water down and wiped it. Like it was an apple or something. <laughs>
What would happen if Russia attacked Sweden? Initially, the world might think Sweden stands no chance, but that's far from the truth. Let me explain. In the first few hours, news of the attack spreads globally. People assume Sweden is weak, but they're underestimating its capabilities. Sweden is a tech giant, especially in developing and exporting advanced weapons worldwide. After 24 hours, Sweden's unique law comes into play. Everyone aged 16 to 70 is required to defend the nation. A massive civilian army forms. Suddenly, every street and every corner in Sweden has a defender. Every resident, regardless of their origin, stands united to defend Sweden. By the end of the first week, the invaders see that the prowess of Sweden's special forces is unmistakable. Equipped with extremely advanced gear, they're trained to handle any threat, proving to be a formidable challenge to the invaders. Two weeks later, Sweden's harsh weather becomes a significant factor. With extreme conditions, the invading forces struggle, while the Swedes, accustomed to their climate, use it to their advantage. After one month, a huge response from Sweden's neighbors, Norway, Finland, and Denmark, Mark appears. They're not going to leave Sweden to fend for itself. Support pours in, both militarily and in terms of humanitarian aid. Three months later, the enemy realizes that attacking Sweden was a grave mistake. NATO just mobilized 90,000 troops for a warlike scenario with Russia, and then had this to say. You need to have water, you need to have uh, a, a, a radio on batteries, and you need to have a uh, a flashlight on, on batteries to make sure that you can survive the first 36 hours. It's not a given that we are in peace. And that's why we have the plans. That's why we are preparing for a conflict with, uh, uh, with Russia and the terror group. So watch my full podcast. Hit the link in the bio right now. Guys, what do you guys think is going to happen? Comment down below. And like and comment if you haven't already.